Um, I wanted to say today about my biography. Um, I, there, when I reached high school age, I started to be really interested in music, and I was in, in rock groups. And I, I was in a rock group called The Days and Nights, D-A-Z-E and K-N-I-G-H-T-S, Days mm -hmm. and Nights. Mm -hmm. And it was fun. I had a very good time, and we did, we played around at different uh, things, and uh, the families were very supportive, and we did talent shows, and we did all kinds of things, and um, and also, when beyond that period, when I went to college, I was in a gospel group at United Wesleyan College called the uh, the uh, New Freedom Singers. And there's a picture on my webpage of that group. There was four of us: uh, me, Brenda Freed, Roger Freed. Now they got married and Julia Clemens. But uh, Brenda's uh, maiden name was Brenda Helmer. So we had a group that went all around everywhere to different churches and did singing. But we had to change our name from the New Freedom Singers to the Freedom Singers because New Freedom Maxi Pads came out and we didn't want to sound like we were a tampon group. So it was a little bit funny, but we uh, changed our name to the Freedom Singers then. And actually, we got pretty well known in college. And I, we were in that group for three or four years. I can't remember. We tra traveled around to sing at different places. And we also sang at the college. And beyond, uh, after that, when I was back uh, home again, I didn't do any music for a while until I moved to Syracuse, where I met Derek Knott, and we formed a band. Derek was someone that came to where I was working at the time, which was Camelot Music. I was working at Camelot Music. I was a manager there. He applied for a job, but I re realized that he didn't have any real qualifications to work there, but he would be a great person to be in a band with. So we started a band and we've been friends ever since. That was in 1979-80. We started recording music in about 1980 or 81, and we've been doing that off and on until now, pretty much. We really didn't, haven't been doing anything uh, major lately. We stopped our heavy recording in the 90s, but we still do a, a, something here and there now and then. Um, but uh, he, we became... Uh, a group also that played our original material and we did covers and we played at different places in the, around the Syracuse area and uh, different places around there. So this is, uh, I'm not telling the story very well, but we have many, many um, recordings of our music uh, all different kinds of places, but uh, Derek is now remastering a lot of our music so that it can be put on CD and sound nice. Most of the time we did recorded on reel to reel or we did cassette, four track or eight track cassette, or we did um, as whatever, um, sound recording machines we had at the time we used for our recordings. And we would mix down to a couple tracks and do track on track recording. And we still have a lot of that material. It turned out very well. 
-hmm. There's several stories that go along with Derek and I being in a uh, writing together. First of all, we went at one point, we thought our material was so strong that we went to New York City to meet with producers and with managers. And it was more of a uh, conference of producers and managers. And we got to sit and learn about how to, how they select material and who they want to talk to and how to go about moving forward if we were really serious about doing music and a lot of uh, very interesting stories about um, who they selected for their, uh, who some of them selected and who they didn't select that other people did that became very popular. So we learned a very, a lot of stuff about that but they didn't select us because hello oh yes that's that's it uh, which one, oh, is, one you? is you um hold on let me see i am i can't see the picture very well this oh wait that's not us that's not, that's you. not you no okay um that's another group we're, there was only four in our group. Uh-huh. Uh -huh. It's, it's all says, says Wesleyan, Wesleyan College, College, but it's... Uh, uh, yes. There, there, there's other pictures of us in Wesleyan College. There's four of us uh -huh. in the group. Four. And two guys and two girls. Uh-huh. That was a, a different group, but I re recognize some of the people in that picture. But I was not in that picture. Uh -huh. Where did that picture come from? Uh, Amazon, well, Amazon, they sell, they a, sell disc. a disc. Oh, all right. Un United Wesleyan College uh, between 1973 and 1977. Mm -hmm. So that's when I was in the group. But uh, Derek and I went through many things together. He was my best friend, and we wrote a lot of stuff at that time. He still lives in Syracuse. He still does music full time, and I am here doing my thing. I still um, listen to our music, and in fact, I, I would like to know a way to put it on our site. Some of the music that we wrote together would be nice to have on the Human Colony site if I knew how to do it. So, I have it in the computer. Is oh, there a way? Ju just send it to me and I will take care of it. Um, so, and it's um, Derek Knott and Jim Charles. That is the name of the recordings. Okay. Because we used to have other names. We used to go by the name Shaded Jade. S-H-A-Y-D-E-D-J-A-Y-D-E. -E -E. But... We stopped using that because there's only two of us, so you might we might as well just call ourselves Derek Knott and Jim Charles. So um, we also started with the name of Simplex, S-I-M-P-L-E-X, but then there was Herpes Simplex, so we just decided to change our name from Simplex to Shaded Jade. So you're going to have to organize this mess of talk. Sorry about that. I think it's pretty good. It's all in order. And um, so Derek and I did a lot of writing. And, and his wife, back then, it was just his girlfriend, Leslie, um, used to tell us how she thought we were do doing with our writing. And she was very, very supportive of us. But when we wrote a song called Musical Medicine, that was her favorite song. And when we played it for her, she bowed down and started uh, saying, okay, you have reached your pinnacle. It is, that is a fabulous song and I love it. And she was very happy with it. I have to tell you about how we did our recordings. We used to go to Derek's uh, there was a room he had set up in his house, and it was in Fayetteville, New York. 
and we used to go to this little room. It was a kind of a crooked little room, but it was filled with recording equipment and keyboards and drum machines and equalizers and tape decks and uh, all kinds of recording equipment, equalizers, all kinds of stuff, uh, synthesizers, also, um, what did they call them? Um, machines that would record uh, sections of songs and then so we could put them together. So it, we had all the things we needed to do sound on sound recording. And so we, that's what we were doing. And we would go into that room and close the door, bring a glass of water, decide on a subject matter. He would start writing a drum beat or something of that nature. I would start writing lyrics. And by the end of the e evening, we would have a song written. And so that's why we have so many songs written is we had sort of a way to do it. We had a formula. Um, he would start with one thing and, and maybe write a little music and I would be writing lyrics. And then we would come together and put that together. We would start singing a melody or whatever. By the end of the evening, we had worked together and gotten a song together. And it was usually pretty wonderful. We really enjoyed doing the writing and the recording portions. Of course, he did all the writing and all the engineering because it was his equipment. He knew, he spent hours and hours and hours studying this equipment so that he could record as well as we did. And he was quite brilliant at recording it. Plus, he was also a brilliant m musician. He could play the guitar very, very well. And he could play keyboards pretty well, too. And he could play bass guitar also excellently. So, and I was a keyboard player. I did a lot of, uh, of the keyboard work. And I did some bass work on the keyboard, which means that I used the bass keys on the keyboard to write bass parts. But I did a lot of singing and a lot of writing also. So the, the conglomeration of us together uh, brought out some really fantastic songs. So, um, but the other thing I wanted to mention, maybe I shouldn't, but I will anyway, because it's part of the history and it's part of the truth, is that we get stoned out of our minds. We would smoke until the room was so full of smoke, when his girlfriend opened the door, she would cough and choke. Um, because we were just stoned out of our minds, but it was good because we were focusing. We did a lot of focus. But of course, uh, that was a time when we were um, do just smoking a lot. <laughs> but I smoked cigarettes at that time too. So it would be a cigarette and then we would do a little bit of something else and then we would write, 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 and then it would be beautiful. We'd have, be having, we'd be, by the end of the evening, we'd be so stoned and wiped out, we'd be listening to it and laughing and uh, we couldn't, we were just having such a great time. So anyhow, that's part of, part of it. I found your um, uh, printed work on the Wesleyan College. Uh, it's called Middletown, the Promised Land by James Charles, uh, written oh. and published in 1976. Can you see it? I uh, guess I saw it. What is it? It's like typewriter, Middletown, the Promised Land, about blacks, history of blacks in, in the local town. Oh, really? I didn't even know that exi existed anymore. I don't know how good of a writer I was, but... It's a standard work, like, uh, but it has uh, all the characteristics, like, you know, beautifully typed with some corrections and references. It's more like a okay. scientific... Research. Well, it's probably one of my homework assignments. Yes, yes. So where you found that, I don't know. But on, West, on, Westland, no, on the Westland College website. Wow, okay. <laughs> wow, interesting. All right. 
Uh, the other thing I wanted to say about um, uh, doing the recording, sometimes we would take the recording equipment downstairs into the living room, and a couple of songs were written down there that were magnificent, but his wife would, his then girlfriend would get very upset with us because we were making so much noise, she couldn't sleep and she had a daily job. She had, uh, she had a hair cutting salon that she owned and it was called The Best Little Hair House in Fayetteville. And she got upset with us because we would play deep into the night. We'd be stoned and playing the music really loud and laughing and, and having a great time, but she needed to sleep. So we were a little bit inconsiderate at times. But when you're stoned, sometimes that happens. So, <laughs> but anyway, our music, uh, we, our music caught a lot of ears, but uh, it couldn't catch the ears of the music industry because we had no management and we had no group to perform the, in the music at times. We did have a group for a while, but the lead singer was a female and uh, we realized that everything wasn't working out. So we went back to just recording in our, in our little um, cubby hole, as we called it, or a little bedroom, side room, whatever it is. But um, that was our most favorite time. We would just record there and uh, make beautiful music. So let's see, what else is there? I, I know there's something that I'm forgetting in that, that period of time. That would seem like a, a, a huge period of time, but it went so fast. It seemed like we were always recording something. We would record a couple times a week. And so we have over 200 songs, if we could find them all, on a recording somewhere, but I have several hours of them on disc already. So not all recorded fantastically because we did it in a bedroom and we did it with all kinds of equipment and we moved it from place to place from one tape recorder to another or from reel to reel to cassette and from cassette to here to there. So um, sometimes it didn't turn out perfect, but I'd say for the, the body of music we have, 90% of it is worth listening to or listenable. Mm -hmm. So that's a, that's a very good percentage. Mm -hmm. So, and also, oh, here's what I wanted to say. Um, during this time when I was writing with Derek, I did not realize that the lyrics that I was writing were actually prophetic to his life. Since I was so close to him, I had, was channeling his future through the music that I was writing. It became very interesting that after I did start channeling many years later, when I told Derek that I was a channeler he said, I've known that all along because you've channeled my life through many of the lyrics of the music and the future. And some of them didn't hit his life until years later, but he would be listening to it. And he said he would become overwhelmed with emotion because that song was his life right at that moment. That song was every bit of what he was doing at that time in the future. And he would find that many of the songs, as he listened to the songs, he would get out certain songs and listen to it and say, this is my future. This is what he wrote back then, but it's my present time right now. So he wrote about my future and all many of the things such as the song Aurora or Easy or some of the other songs definitely co coincide
coincided with his life in the future. And so whenever I told him later that I was a channeler, he was not surprised because he knew that I was psychic a long time ago. But he never told me that. He never told me anything about that until I told him that I was a channeler. And then he was like, oh, that doesn't surprise me. And the first thing he did was ask for a reading. Mm -hmm. He said, yes, I, and I want a reading. That was the first thing he did after I told him. And he asked me, I did a reading for him. And he went out. And when he came back, he said, your reading was perfect. It, it was exactly accurate because he asked for information about a certain person and about a certain thing and about a certain time and a certain experience and when it happened it was it, it happened absolutely perfectly the way that it was channeled so he knew that that was that i was a channeler and that i that there was something uh, different about uh, my energy and my spirituality. So it was very interesting. So, and I would like to share a lot of those songs because some of those songs are, are just so beautiful. And, uh, and, and even today would work out in the, uh, I think they would be uh, viable in the um, music industry today. So I do believe that. I found, I, I, yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. I found another uh, mention of you guys. It's a it's tiny one, but still something interesting. Hold on a second, I'll show it. Um, where is it? Just a second. Should be, I guess I can do that. Oh. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's it. Can you see it? Uh, so it says, it's newspaper, Fayette County uh, leader from Fayette, Iowa, page six, uh, July 28th, 1977. And it says, um, okay, the freedom singers from but Bartlesville, Westland College, Buttersville, Oklahoma. Is it yours? Yeah, I think so. Is it Bart Bartlesville? No, Bartlesville, West Virginia? No. No, it's Oklahoma. So there is another Freedom Singers. Okay. But that it's also after us. I graduated in 77. So it's another another Freedom Singers and another Westland College. It's Fayette okay. Westland College. All right. Okay, very good. Yeah. Freedom Singers. We were in the between 73 and 77. Yeah. Okay. There should be some mention of us. I was the editor of the yearbook one year, so, uh -huh. or the news, was it the newspaper? I don't remember. Um, I was, no, the editor of the newspaper or the yearbook or something, when I was just a sophomore. So what, were the aliens involved? No, aliens weren't involved in my life back then, but they were, but I mean, not consciously involved. But I used to see spirits back then, and I thought that they were demons or whatever, but they might have been just aliens. No one ever harmed me, or I never was hurt by anyone. So look up. Um, I was also vice president of the junior class. Uh, so you weren't taken to the ships, not no, no members not of the. Then. I think that they were sort of scared of those kind of colleges. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, um, yes, I just wanted to include my musical. Uh -huh. And then finally, the last musical thing that I've done is the John Lennon material. And it's going to be presented. So uh, uh, you've, you've heard it and you have a copy of it. But it's going to change a little bit now, but it's going to be the way John really wants it now. He's sort of thought about it and wants it to be presented uh, in a raw state, I guess. So I'm going to 
uh, record it the way he's told me to do it. And that will, it'll be a little while before I get that out, but I will try to get that out. Uh, so you have a good collection of um, um, CDs in your basement. When did you yes. collect it? Yes. When did you collect it? I've, um, well, I've always had large record collections and large collections of music. I'm a music collector, but I've, I've been collecting all my life. So this, the music collection goes back to the 50s. I was born in 1955, but some of the recordings in there are just, I mean, I would not have listened to them in 1959, probably, or 57, which some of them are. Uh, but I listen to them now. Some of them were, were Elvis Presley's first recordings, Miles Davis's first recordings. Um, what was her name? Lady in Blue. Um, I can't remember. Uh, but I, I collect records from the time that I was born till now. And I still have a, a record collection going on now. I, I still buy new, new material and I look for uh, certain things in, in, a cla in the classics that I don't have in my collection. And that's what I do. That's one of my things is I'm a, I, I collect music and CDs. Mm -hmm. So I have over 5,000. Mm -hmm. So what was your favorite um, uh, musicians? Well, I loved the Beatles. I loved Elton John. Elton John became my mentor for writing. I just used to listen to Elton John in the 70s quite ex extensively. Loved him to pieces, still do. I think he's one of my all-time favorites, of course. Um, there were some groups that no one ever heard of that I took a shine to, like the group XTC or the group Spock's Beard, which were, um, they were different. They, were, they had their own sort of sound, but XTC tried to sound like the Beatles, but they had a very unique sound but they were so good and Spock's beard was very progressive like Genesis or yes, but they were, they combined all of them together with jazz and everything else and fusion and made it into a, a totally different uh, kind of sound. And I love them for that. And just so many, I just love so many. Um, I cannot, I would say that I have many, many favorites actually. Um, but those are a few. Um, did you follow their, uh, how do they say, their life and the news about where they moved? What did they do? Oh, yes. I have books about XTC. I have books about the Beatles. I have books about David Bowie. I have books about um, other, different, other different artists and that. So I do keep up with uh, them but now it's hard for me to read with my eyes being so bad, but I do like to, I do love uh, still the Beatles and I still love them all. So, and have books to prove it. <laughs> How about the new ones? Do you follow the, any new, new developments? Oh, new music. There yeah. are some uh, new artists that are really fantastic. I even, I do even have rap music, but I'm not a great connoisseur of rap music or of hip hop because um, I like the melody better than I do like the spoken word. I do like spoken word, but I like melody far, far more. So, um, so let's see, Who is somebody, somebody new that I really like. Um, I really like, um, let's see. John Mayer has a new one out, but he's not real new. He's been out for a while, but the XX, they're a, a new band that had a, an album out this year, and that was their debut album. It was very good. I can't say I love loved it, but I, I think it was good. And um, 
the group uh, Train, the group uh, Led Zeppelin I loved from the 70s. Um, there's so many, I can't even think of them all. So, um, what, what, what do you think about Bob Dylan? I, Bob Dylan was great at uh, lyrics. I don't. I can't say that I liked his voice. His some of his music's actually very good. Um, I loved his lyrics as well as Paul Simon's and Bruce Springs, Springsteen's lyrics. They were all great lyric lyricists to me. Bernie Taupin was a great lyricist. Um, uh, his lyrics were amazing and transcended the rock culture really. He became a wordsmith at a very early age and could twist a phrase like no one else. And it was great. He was the greatest folk rock artist ever. Absolutely. Uh, how about Leonard Cohen? Leonard Cohen also, another one with a terrible voice, but a great message. I liked his stuff. I think that he is brilliant. Um, some of his stuff will live on forever and ever, uh, such as the song Hallelujah. I believe he's the one that wrote Hallelujah. And that is an incredible song with such depth and unbelievable meaning. And so many people have just um, taken that song and made it their own because it meant so much to them. So yes, Leonard Cohen is a brilliant, brilliant writer, mostly lyrical, yes. How about Doors? The Doors, Jim Morrison, Ray Manzarek, uh, yes. Robbie Krieger, the three of them uh, created a sound that will never be forgotten. Uh, Riders of the Storm tells a great story of, of uh, well, Jim Morrison was slightly demented, in my opinion, but was very much in tune with uh, off-world information. So his lyrics really are not from a human standpoint and point in some places. Like when you hear the song, People Are Strange, he is really talking about um, that they're different than him and that he was actually the strange one. And actually he was singing a self autobiographical song. He was the strange person in this very interesting world. But of course, there was other strange people, which he noticed. But his uh, Light My Fire and Hello, I Love You and Touch Me and Soft Parade and many of the, many of the things that he wrote were uh, brilliant. Yes. But I loved Riders on the Storm. That's one of my favorite that he wrote. And I liked... Um, a lot of, I, I liked a lot of his material, actually. Waiting for the Sun, all that stuff back there, brilliant. How about the, the older ones? Uh, like, uh, what, what, do, what did you think about Sinatra? I have the box set, a box, uh, set of Sinatra. I thought N Nelson Riddle's arrangements of the orchestra in Sinatra's music was the most brilliant orchestral arrangements of its time and it has not really been surpassed to this day. Sinatra was a great singer. He was a sing he was one that used his own timing for uh, emotional effect and he had a voice that was um, sultry and sexy and made uh, the women woo, but he also had a voice that could uh, de deliver a message in a different way than anybody else that I can think of because of his timing. He had a very, very interesting and complex timing for how he sang his songs. But once again, his orchestral arrangements especially Nelson Riddle. He did have other bands, 
other orchestras with him, and I can't remember right now what they were. But Nelson Riddle orchestra arrangements absolutely blow me away. How about Simon and Garfunkel? Paul Simon, brilliant lyricist, brilliant um, communicator. He's, uh, he is someone that can tell a story with a song and make it really down to earth and really, uh, you can actually visualize it. He is someone that I really regard as a storyteller and a beautiful songwriter, the boxer, um, Mrs. Robinson, um, the stories that he told, uh, uh, America, the song about America, off to see America and he's riding in the bus and all the little stories within that scenario as they're sitting on the bus. Beautiful, incredible, bookends. Uh, that's another great song. Bridge Over Troubled Water is, is, is just an amazing song that transcends that, the, um, that gives you a look at um, how his emotions were deep, how deep his emotions were and how they ran. And he was, he was brilliant, yes. Uh, yes, Parsley Sage, Rosemary and Thyme. Amazing, really. How about the older generation, like um, uh, Armstrong, Louis Armstrong? Louis Armstrong was one of a kind. He Not only did he have a voice that was so unique, but his uh, horn playing was uh, brilliant. He had, he had a great amateur. He had a great... Uh, technique and he had a, a great ear for listening how to fit into the arrangements and how to make an arrangement work he um, also with his voice he could rasp out a great song of love and still make it sound sexy with that really raspy uh, gravelly sounding voice so you were Listening to him too? Yes. Uh, Janis Joplin? Janis Joplin. Ah, oh, there's one. She is one I couldn't get into right away. But once I did, I understood. She was, she was a victim of a great pain. I psychically connected to her once, and I felt so much pain. She was in so much pain. Um, uh, agony about about her life and how she had to live it but her renditions of uh, Peace of My Heart uh, Me and Bobby McGee uh, there are so many things about her that is were so misunderstood and also she was so confused sexually but she was beautiful she was a beautiful individual her heart was pure, really. Uh, even though she was a drug addict, and even though she was, um, she was in so much pain, her third eye was wide open. Did you know that? Her third eye was just gazing into the future, and uh, it it grasped the meaning of many things that many people did not could not possibly grasp at, at, at her time. She was well ahead of her time. Uh -huh. Thank you. Did you follow the uh, poetry writers? Some of them. You mean like Shelley or... Um, I, I followed Rod McEwen, who was <laughs> of a modern age. I liked him and I thought he was good. But he has... But you're talking Shakespeare and Shelley and uh, who else was there? Um, uh, C. C. Cummings or what is his name? Uh, e. E. Cummings and um, many of those. I did get into them for a little while, but I 
I got out of them, and I'll tell you why. Because my, I wanted to be culturally up to date, and I felt that they were some of the things that they had written were were extremely accurate for all times, but other things were only accurate for their times. So I I wanted to be my own kind of lyricist and own kind of poet. So I actually um, stopped getting into the, the classics as much because I wanted to be an, a more original. Thank Once you. you hear some of my lyrics, you'll know what I mean. Oh, how do we get it? I will send you, I will send you some songs. I have no idea where my books of lyrics are from that era, but I need to find them because there's some incredibly good lyrics in there. Yeah, it's easy to scan and then uh, convert it to text. Yes, but I will uh, send you some music, though, and you can listen mm -hmm. carefully to the lyrics, and I will send the lyrics to those songs. I know that I have some lyrics to some songs, so. Interesting. Well, is it all right if we stop now? Yeah, I think we're good. Thank you very much. Did you get enough for today? Yes, wonderful. Thank you. Okay. Nice story. I have to get ready for dinner. <laughs> All right. Have a good day. And uh, wait a second. We need to plan the things. I will stop the recording. Hold on. Yep. Uh, I need to press some buttons. I pressed it.